Hello, my name is Roger and I work with Edge Innovations. Here at Edge, our job is to make the impossible possible. Our engineers, designers, and animators, we work with a technology called animatronics. Can you say that word? Animatronics. Animatronics is when we make a robot look and move like it's alive. Let me show you what I mean. For the movie Free Willy, well, the story required a young actor to be able to interact and swim and perform up close with a full-sized orca whale to make it safe, reliable, animal-friendly, and realistic. We made animatronic orcas to use in this movie, and no one could tell the difference between the animatronics and the real ones. For a movie called The Abyss, well, we had to make some submarines that could pretend to chase each other and crash into canyons along the way. They were miniature submarines. They were really only about this big. Pretty cool, huh? And when the director from the Abyss started a new project as a real ocean explorer, he asked us to help work on the submarine that he would take down to the very bottom of the ocean. This super deep part of the ocean, it's called the Marianas Trench. Our work with director and ocean explorer James Cameron, who you might know as the director of the Avatar movies, well, it helped us learn a lot about submarines. I'm really glad you ocean explorers are going to come with us on this adventure today. We're a couple minutes away, but um, how many of you want to see a dolphin today? How many of you have ever dreamed about being able to talk to a dolphin? I know I sure have. And I'd like to introduce you to someone who I know has also dreamed about being able to talk to dolphins. Acacia, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Excellent. Um, so looking at the Zoom, our registration for our Zoomcast told us well, we've got about 500 kids at this point from four different countries in different schools and classrooms at home. So, well, we thought it was important to have a teacher with us for this adventure. So let me introduce you to Acacia. Acacia, can you tell us a little bit something about yourself and what you do? Hi, I'm Acacia. Like Roger said, I'm a teacher. I work for Teach Kind and we teach kids about animals and how we can be kind to them in our everyday lives. I've visited many schools and talked to lots of students who love animals and want to learn how to help them. And that's what we're going to do today. Except the special animal that we'll learn about and hopefully learn from is an animal who lives in the ocean. In addition to my job, some other things I love are science, art, and adventuring. Some of my very favorite things to do are hike in the mountains, swim in the ocean, and travel. I love to explore the magic of planet Earth and make friends along the way. Raise your hand if you also love to go on adventures and explore. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome aboard Acacia. Last week, just a few miles offshore, we took our submarine down and a most amazing thing happened. A dolphin came up to this porthole right here and tapped on the glass with her fin. In college, I learned that the brain of a dolphin, it's, it's much bigger than the brain of a human. They're smart. I also learned that dolphins are able to use the sounds that they make to be able to see underwater. We humans call seeing underwater with sound sonar. Can you all say that word, sonar? Sonar. We use sonar in submarines to be able to see the submarine's path in the undersea world, what it looks like, so that we make sure we don't crash into hidden rocks or scrape coral reefs. Dolphins can make clicks and squeaks loud enough that the sounds bounce off of things underwater. Then they can hear those sounds coming back and in their brains, they can imagine what the underwater world around them looks like. This is called echolocation. Let's say that word too. Echolocation. Echolocation. We think dolphins use all of these different types of sounds to talk to one another in their very own language. And some scientists believe that their clicks and sounds enable dolphins to communicate not with words, but with pictures that they project into each other's imaginations. 
How cool would it be if you could talk to your friends and have pictures of what you were describing appear in their imaginations while you speak? This rig here, it's our special dolphin language translator. We're hoping that the dolphin we met last week will be able to talk to us visually. And when she does, her images will appear here and then we'll beam them to that screen that's in your classrooms and in your homes. Yeah, it should work. Um, hey, it's almost time. Are you explorers ready to come along on this adventure? Excellent. I see lots of hands waving in the Zoom. We named our dolphin Dell, but, but I don't see her here. We call dolphins language Dolphinese. Everyone say the word Dolphinese. Dolphinese. We asked several of our explorer friends to help us call out to Dell using their best dolphin sounds. Try again. It's really good. But, huh, well, nothing. Um, I can switch on the underwater light and I'll also check to see if we can use sonar to locate her. Hmm. Well, maybe we're just out of luck today. The radar looks blank. Explorers, help me let him know that Dell's right there. <laughs> Look out the window. The dolphin is right there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Do you? Do you understand my language? I knew it. Wow. Um, uh, dolphins are so smart that some of them, it appears, have learned our language. Even though, well, I can't understand a single word of dolphinese. Are, are you okay staying here with us for a little while? Would you be okay if my friend Acacia and, and some of our explorer friends asked you a couple of questions? Take it away, Acacia. Hi, my name is Acacia. I'm a teacher and it's my job to help children learn about animals of all kinds. Are you showing us that you observe humans and teach other dolphins about us? So you are a teacher too. Wow, I am so excited to talk to you. My student friends and I have made a list of questions that we really want to ask you. I'm just going to get started. Hmm, which ocean is your home? This is working. She's showing us a picture of the entire earth, the full blue planet, where all the oceans, they're connected. Are are you trying to tell us that your home is the entire world ocean? Okay. <laughs> Humans call a group of dolphins a pod, which means your family and friends. Who is in your family and how do you spend time with your family and friends? You start swimming with just your family and then your whole larger pod, you join it with them and you swim for really, really long distances, like up to 100 miles, we've heard. Our explorer friend, Holly from New Zealand, said that you're on her coolest list of animals. And she asked, can you understand other animals? Oh, can you? Well, dolphins, yes, of course. Um, anything else? Yes, you humpback whales and orcas, which are also dolphins, so you can understand any animal that uses echolocation. Amazing. Our student explorer friend named Violet from Florida asked, what do you like to do for fun? Are there <laughs> things that make you happy? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, that makes us really happy too. We call that surfing. <laughs> 
Just like humans, other animals can feel happy, sad, or scared. And we all like to have fun. So how do you sleep underwater? Hmm. Half a brain's in color and half, half a, half a brain? Do you, do you sleep with half of your brain awake and half of your brain asleep so that the awake part can tell you when to go up to the surface and breathe? <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, humans can't sleep like that or do anything like echolocation. So how deep and far can you go? Okay, so you're showing us a couple of dolphins, a dolphin and an orca, and you're going really far down. Um, looks like about 3,200 feet for a dolphin and about 3,500 feet for an orca. And, that's, and you can swim about 60 miles in a day. That's what we've read, is that right? That's like how far you'd travel if you drove in a car on a highway for about an hour. Woo! I'm an herbivore, so I only eat plants and not animals. Jackson from California wants to know, what's your favorite food? Squid and fish. Dolphins are carnivores, so their bodies are designed to eat fish and squid. Without those animals, they can't survive. Jack from Florida wants to ask, what's your biggest predator? Mm. I think I know, a shark. So, Jack, I'm sure that you've seen Finding Nemo. Have you seen it, especially the part where they talk about what the sharks eat? The sharks talk about that. Have you seen? No, I, I didn't think so. Natalie from Los Angeles sent this in. What do sharks look like? And Jack asked, do you have to protect your babies from them? Hmm, great question. Well, sharks, go after animals that are smaller than they are. Um, so it's the young dolphins who are in danger the most. But dolphins work together like a team to protect themselves and they're a whole lot faster and more nimble in the water than the sharks are. So they work together and they can ram the sharks so that the sharks swim away all bruised up. In, in a way, sharks might have a good reason to be a little bit scared of dolphins. Nyla from Colorado wants to know if you tell stories. There are stories about dolphins protecting humans from drowning and from sharks too. Sometimes keeping humans afloat for many miles. Are those stories true? <laughs> I love that story. And I'm gonna use Google to help me ask the question about this story. Um, there it is. Um, I see in Google that one time a dolphin, not that long ago, saved a 14 year old boy he fell off a boat and he was drowning underwater and the dolphin came up behind him, pushed him back up to the surface and nudged him to the boat till his dad could snatch him up. Is that a true story? Wow. Oh, there are Men stories throughout history that, that dolphins have helped humans for a really long time. Are, do you know about those stories too? Wow. Many of our explorer friends want to know how you feel about humans. Mm. Yeah, I think that kind of tells us that story. Those pictures make us really sad, but we can turn our sadness into action. Be a hero by picking up your trash and by telling your friends about what you're learning here today. As a teacher, if there is one thing that you could say to every human who lives on land, like me, what would that be? Oh yeah, beautiful. Um, that, that you want a healthy and happy planet for us all to live on, where ocean and land animals can live their lives in peace and freedom. It, is that kind of like what you're trying to show us? <laughs> Thank oh yes. You. Go ahead. The Akisha. message of the message of not taking animals from their homes in nature. I will be more than happy to share that with my students. Excellent. Well, 
Thank you, Dell. That was fantastic. I mean, we want to be respectful of your time, and if you need to swim back and be with your family or your pod, go ahead. You don't want to go be with your family or your pod? Acacia, do you understand what she might be trying to communicate? Remember, Dell told us that she was a teacher too. Yeah. Perhaps she wants to ask us some questions about humans. Oh, whoa, whoa, great. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use my picture book and see if there's something in here that Dell might be interested in. Um, here's one, do you, yeah, this, it, yeah. Um, this is, this picture book has people on it and I think she wants to know how many people there are on land? It's a really big number. It's really too big for me to even imagine. About eight billion humans live on the <sighs> land part of the earth. So if you stacked eight billion kindergartner desks, it would go to the moon and back more than twice. Wow. <laughs> um, let me show some other pictures. That one. She, she's, she's looking at the land animals. Um, I think she wants to know how many land, how many animals are on the land. That's also a really big number. Humans and dolphins are two animal species. Can you all say that word, species? Species. A species is a group of animals who look and act alike and form families. Google says there are 8.7 million different recorded species of animals on the entire planet. 6.5 million of them are on the land and 2.2 million are in the oceans. Okay, a few, hmm. She doesn't want me to go away from the land animal page. Do, I, I think she wants to know if the animals on the land are happy. That's yeah. a really hard question to answer. Some land animals are treated very respectfully by humans, but there are many other animals who are treated like they're objects without any feelings. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's looking at this picture of all the fish and projecting the picture of all the boats. You want to know about those boats with the nets that pull up all those fish. You ask a lot of good questions. Dolphins need to eat fish, but there are also humans on the land who choose to eat other animals like fish. Are you wondering what will happen to you and the other animals in the ocean if we take too many fish out and don't leave enough for you? <laughs> many people look at those same pictures and wonder the same thing. I'm sure all of our ocean explorers want to do everything they can to help save dolphins and other ocean animals like you. Just like 13 year old Mark, who started trash fishing, <laughs> which is fishing for trash to clean up our waterways. Wow. The first step is learning that all animals who live underwater are individuals too. Hmm. She's showing us an image of dolphins being caught in nets. She wants to know, I guess, about the boats that sometimes catch dolphins in nets. I teach children about how dolphins and all animals should be allowed to live freely in their natural environments. Some humans never learned that lesson. That's the sound that you made um, when you told us you were a teacher, right? Uh, Acacia, um, yeah, I, I think she wants to ask the same question to you that we asked her. If there was one thing that you could say to world ocean animals, what would that be? I'd like to echo what you said before, Adele. I dream of a healthy and happy planet for us all to live on, where ocean and land animals are able to live their lives in peace and freedom. We'd like to give a few of our students the opportunity to ask questions to Dell. Good idea. Please use your chat window and ask away. Hmm. Maddie from New Zealand wants you to know that she likes sunshine and swimming. And her question is, how long can you hold your breath? Great question, Maddie. Um, if I use my fingers, will you tell me when to stop? 
five, 10, 15. She's telling us she can hold her breath for about 15 minutes. Wow. How many times a minute do you normally breathe? Ah, we'll do it the same way. Oh, she normally breathes about four times a minute. That's more than I would have thought. So Jackson wants to know if you have feelings. Yeah. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, we would have guessed that. And that really does seem like a really good place to stop with a final question. And now comes a part that uh, we really hope is going to be a big surprise to a lot of you. Dell is not a real dolphin. Let's walk the set off. <laughs> yeah, and I'd like to bring out from Edge Innovations, the founder of Edge and also our lead dolphin animator. This here is Walt Conti. Um, Hi, everyone. And we're going to show you how the dolphin animates. Can you make her head move up and down and side to side? And if her tail were swimming because she was in the open ocean, what would that look like? Exactly. A real dolphin would want to swim free in the open ocean. Remember the word species that we talked about before? It's a group of animals who look and act alike and form families. Sometimes people hurt or bully other animals just because they belong to a different species. That's called speciesism. Whether you're a human like me and all of you, or if you're a dolphin like Dell, everyone deserves to be treated with kindness and respect. So, a bunch of our explorers came in with us and we want to bring them on screen to be choreographers for a test with Walt that's going to be really hard. We asked for another song and Walt's going to try and make Dell dance to this song and he's going to try and follow not only the music but what our guests do up high. Tristan from New Zealand sent us a really crazy song about pirates. So let's bring it on, Tristan. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you everyone for being a part of our Crazy Dolphin Dance Party. You're all welcome to email us if you think of any other questions that you'd like to know, either about real dolphins or about animatronic dolphins. Listen, our hope here at Edge Innovations and at TeachKind is that really soon, you'll be able to see animatronic animals like this in science centers, aquariums, or zoos near you because, well, the real animals want to stay free in their world. And we hope that you will also help us create stories about these animals that make us fall in love with them because we want to love their home along with them. And remember, dolphins love their families and their ocean home. That's where they're the happiest and healthy. You can speak up for dolphins and all other animals now by sharing what you learned here today with everyone you know. Thank you very much for joining us here. We'll leave you with a video of Dell playing in a pool with some families just like yours. But remember, she's not a real dolphin. So, swimming <laughs> with her is okay. Bye for now. I am going to tell you about a magical place today. It's called the Ocean Area, the Island of Dreams. There is a dolphin that lives there who learned how to understand our language. 
these kids were making sounds, and then um, the dolphin came over and said hi. I had a dream that I was swimming with like lots of animals, like dolphins, killer whales, uh, regular whales. I thought the dolphin was fantastic, and um, I didn't think I'll see like a dolphin in real life. All the way across to this side. Who's feeling the love today? Who's feeling the most <laughs> strong love in their heart? Those two people there? <laughs> How did you know it's their anniversary? When I first saw the dolphin, um, I thought it could be real. And certainly, if I was a little kid, I definitely could have thought it was real. <laughs> I got to, well, I mean, I got to swim with the dolphin. I got to uh, just kind of replicate its movements and um, kind of just that body undulation underwater. Yeah, what we might learn from a robotic dolphin. Um, I think that you can learn a lot of things. I think you can learn um, the most efficient way to move through water in general. And then I also think it's helpful to learn more about dolphins in general and um, how just amazing they are in um, their, like, their way of life and moving across the water.